get up, get, get up, get up. All right, guys, today we have the craziest interview that we've had on the Mets Stub podcast. Can't believe it. We are sitting here with Max Scherzer. Uh, we wouldn't have this podcast with the Mets if it wasn't for Max. So, Max, first, thank you oh, for you're welcome. allowing this to happen. We really appreciate it. No, let's have some fun with it. How have you, uh, how have you enjoyed New York so far? Uh, it's been great. Um, you know, I moved out here to Long Island, uh, you know, getting used to everything that's here about New York and uh, just love every, everything about it. My family love it. Uh, my kids love it. Uh, so it, this this year's been uh, way more fun than I even thought. That's really great to hear. What is you said you love it? What's your favorite thing about New York so far? What's the one thing that now that you're living here, you've seen that it might actually be the best city in the world? I I think I think to be the best city in the world, you got to have so many things. You can't, I don't think you can narrow it down to one thing. Uh, for me, this is such a different experience with the kids now. You know, when I was early in my career and I didn't have any kids. I think I got to enjoy the city a little bit more, yeah. uh, you know, a little bit more restaurants. Um, but now with kids, uh, it's a whole different experience. Uh, I think one of the fun, the fun things is, uh, you know, being able to share kind of the men in black. Uh, you know, show them some men in black clips and, you know, show them the spaceships, uh, you know, right over here in Queens. So they, they, they get a kick out of that. They love it. Uh, so it's fun to do that with them. Obviously, for a lot of your career, you got to pitch against the Mets. What's it been like now to pitch for them? Uh, honestly, having the energy from the from the fans, uh, I, I always enjoyed uh, coming here just because of the fans and what they bring. Uh, you know, facing them for all those years, it was fun. Uh, but now it's more fun to have them on your side. Uh, and you know, when this is your home ballpark, uh, you know these fans bring an energy that uh, you you always find a way to rise up for. And so, you know, when they're making noise for you and going crazy, it, it's so much more of a fun environment to pitch in. Yeah, no hitter was a lot of fun for all of us. I'm really sure. I think that was also the first no hitter in City Field, which is a pretty, pretty cool accolade now that you're here. Yeah, I, I, I've had some fun with that one because uh, K Long was the hitting coach at the time, so uh, we're good buds, and I let him know that that happened on his watch. Another part of being a part of the Mets, and now for the last month especially, I've been sharing dugout with Jacob Degrom, and we've gotten some great clips on TV and on social media of you guys just seemingly like razzing each other during games. What's it been like to build a relationship with him? Uh, it, it's great. I mean, obviously, he's one of the best pitchers in the game. That we, and what he can do on the mound, it, it's absolutely unbelievable. So, um, you know, just picking his mind, watching what he does, you know, watching what he does in between the starts, uh, and just having fun, being being a teammate, going out there, and you know, just being being one of the guys, uh, having fun with the rest of the guys, and keeping all the jokes going when we're not pitching. I mean, I, that's kind of what our jobs are sometimes, is, is starting pitchers, to make sure everybody else is having fun you know, while we're on the bench. Jeremy Hefner, pitching coach for the Mets. We love him on the podcast. Speak to what he's been able to do with you so far this year. Um, he's been some good, good set of eyes and ears. Uh, you know, I, I have all my kind of cues of th mental things I say, and uh, he's done a pretty good job of, of understanding what I'm trying to accomplish and how I how, kind of how I think and how I make adjustments. And so, um, you know, being able to see you know one thing happen and be able to make an adjustment off of that and understand the, the verbiage that it takes to kind of get there. I mean, we, you can all, we all, all, all pitchers kind of fall in the same kind of bucket, but we all kind of have to tell ourselves different things to, to fix ourselves. And so, uh, you know, picking his mind of what works on different guys and then, uh, you know, taking, you know, the things that work for me and, and being able to kind of merge the two together. And so he's been great to work with. Um, but I will say it is weird having my pitching coach be younger than me. <laughs> That's, that's pretty funny. I never thought about it. And that's also something a lot of other pitchers have said about Hef, that he's just really good at relating to everybody in like that, those kind of fun ways. Another fun thing that's happened this year that I would love to get your take on is the pitch com. What are your opinions mm -hmm. on it? Have you used it? And just what do you think about it for the game as a whole? Um, so pitch com is – all right. So it works. It works extremely well. Like, it, um, like it, it takes away the mental process of having a, you know, a part, of, part of the game that, that, that's been there to, to the, like have a – Sophisticated set of signs, uh, so that the other team can't crack them. Uh, and you know, I've, you know, I, I pride myself on having a complex set of the systems that, I mean, you could sit there and watch it chart it, and you wouldn't be able to crack it. Um, and so, um, to not have to put that, you know, kind of mental, you know, thought into every pitch when you know runners in, on second, uh, it's a lot easier. It frees you up, it allows you to, um, you know, pitch and. Uh, you know, you're able to work through uh, multiple. Like you can shake off multiple times a lot easier and keep rhythm that way. Um, but at the same time, I also think we we're kind of missing part of the game. Uh, part of the game was stealing signs yeah. and, and and having that. And we're now completely taking that away. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that you know, let's say I want to say bad pitcher, but 
uh, a, system, a pitcher that has bad signs, like that—that mm -hmm. that was part of the game. Is that you have bad signs, and then your your signs can get cracked, and that's part—that was part of the advantage of of uh, of being a good pitcher, a pitcher with good signs, is that you had that advantage over those type of pitchers. Now we're on the same playing field, um, so it's going to be interesting moving forward, especially if there's going to be a pitch clock. Um, you know, now I'm going to be able to work extremely fast. Yeah. Uh, and so there, I, I feel like there's going to be unintended consequences because of that. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be able to weaponize this in a way <laughs> to be able to uh, flip it around and, and make and make the hitters uh, hate this uh, because it's going to be so much easier on me. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about weaponizing the pitch clock. It usually oh, feels I, like it's the opposite. No, I, it, once, you know, if you, if you hear what the minor league rules are, that the hitter only has one timeout, um, and I can be ready at, you know, I, I, what's, I'm just, I think it's nine seconds. Uh, there, yeah, right around nine, there. Some, somewhere like that. Um, I fully plan on weaponizing this and, and making the hitters, uh, you know, for, forcing them to burn that timeout. Uh, you know, I, 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 it's like football. Yeah, a little bit. And, and then the, the, the thing will be the delta between um, from when I can actually pitch to actually pitch, I think, is a large, like a nine second delta. And so, in theory, I could really hold the ball for nine seconds. Uh, that's, an, uh, that's, for, a <laughs> that's a really, really long time. Uh, and I'm actually. Uh, when the stolen base was a little bit bigger part of the game, it, it seems like it's fallen off a little bit, but it's can, kind of come back in a little bit more, uh, where guys are more taking chances to run. Uh, that was one. I always took pride in that, being able to hold the ball for five, six, seven seconds. Like that was not a problem for me. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I feel like I'm going to find a way to be able to uh, weaponize these new rules against the hitters. Something else that, just from our perspective, though, it seemed like you took pride in was preparation. But in the old game, talking about another rule change, you always prepared a little more holy than some other pitchers in the league, running the bases, working on batting practice, bunting. How has it felt adjusting to now just being a pitcher when you pitch? <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't pitch in the AL for five years. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But more recently, um, the last, last, like, seven. Uh, I got love-hate for it. First off, I love... I love hitting, love the base running, love the bunting. Like, I, I, you know, it, it was a, such a impact part of the game that I love taking pride in and working at it. Uh, really kept me locked in and, and even being on the bench because there was times where you were the extra hitter or runner or, uh, you know, so many different situations that could pop up where you might get your number called. Um, but for the game as a whole, it's better to have a DH. Yeah, I mean, it, definitely. It, it just is. Um, so there's two things I can also go on tangents about about this. Um, <laughs> Your mic. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to see um, the D. I would like to see pitchers hit at the younger younger levels, like the college yeah. level. I think that's good for pitchers to have to hit and be a part of the game. I think you can learn something about pitching by hitting. Mm. I mean, you can. It's really hard to hit. And if you get as a pitcher, you get in a box and, for, and force pitchers to be athletes and be able to handle the bat. Uh, I feel like that makes better pitchers. Um, so, in some form or capacity, I wish pitchers had to hit at lower levels. Um, I, but I do do concede that it's a better product um, at the major league level to have a DH. Uh, and, and then the other way to potentially uh, go about this is one of the issues I, I, I um, you know foresee within baseball is is how starting pitchers are becoming less and less important part of the game. Yeah. Where as a whole, starting pitchers are throwing fewer pitches, fewer innings. Um, for a variety of reasons, and I, I don't think that's necessarily the best thing for the game and the direction of the game. Uh, I, I actually think we need to be wanting pitchers to throw 100 pitches, trying to throw six innings, not just getting removed because all of a sudden it's th three times through the lineup. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the rule ch rules uh, that I've seen tinker with that I would like to see going forward is call it a qualifying start, that if you had some type of qualifying start, call it 100 pitches, six innings, uh, something to that effect. That then you then you maintain your DH for the whole game. Oh, okay. Uh, if you don't make this qualifying start, then you lose your DH and you got to play by national kind of national rules where you have pinch hitters after that. So, That's really interesting. Um, I think if you if you were to put that rule play, rule in place, it would encourage the development of more starters uh, in the minor leagues, uh, the force teams that have to try to develop starters and to keep starters in the game more. Uh, I think that's uh, you know when fans. You know, see, come to a ballpark, and that, I think that's one of the allures of, of fans is to be like, all right, who's a starting pitcher yeah, matchup? Definitely. I mean, that, that's a that's a good you know thing to see. We you, you, like as a game, like I, I like watching other you know the matchup of other pitchers. Of course, uh, if we go to more bullpen, you know, I don't I don't think that's as um, I don't think that helps the entertainment product of the game, and I think we should be, you know, encouraging starters to pitch more. That was definitely the most cerebral answer ever we've had to the DHL <laughs> dilemma. That was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I have so many problems. I got, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I've been on way too many committees. <laughs> been waiting on this wormhole way too long. All right, to make it a little bit easier, questions for you now. We see how intense you are on the field, but what do you do off the field? What are you up to when you're not playing baseball? <laughs> oh, right now, right now I'm parenting. I got three kids. They're wild. Uh, we're at playgrounds. We're making crafts. Uh, so I got two girls and a boy, and it, it, it's on right now. <laughs> Talking intensity here. Mets are in the middle of a pennant race. We double checked the roster before. But we believe that you are the only person on this team right now who's climbed the mountaintop, who's won the World Series. What's it like when you have a team that is ex as experienced as the Mets, as this roster is specifically, no one has gotten to that point? What is your responsibility? What is your feeling? What have you done to, to I don't know, maybe just spread your knowledge or experience? Yeah, um, and that's all everybody's goal. Uh, you know, there's no magic formula, but there are some key components that you have to have as a team and, and team chemistry uh, in order to navigate October. Because October is just a crazy month if you go all the way. Uh, there's so many different things that unfold and so many twists and turns that everybody has to be ready. And uh, it takes a total team effort uh, to win a World Series. It's not yeah. just one player. And that's the best part about it. it is It doesn't rank, you know, like what player number you were on your <laughs> ring. Yeah. It, everybody has the same ring. Exactly. So everybody has a chance to contribute. And everybody's contributions mean the most because it can be the 26th guy. And yet when he goes through with a big hit or a big out, uh, like that last out can really make the difference between yeah. winning and losing one ball game, and one ball game is the difference between making it and losing it. And so um, that's the that's the cool part uh, about this team is we have such a good team and team chemistry and how everybody's fitting together. Uh, and so it's going to be exciting uh, to continue to finish off September and obviously uh, see where we can do in the postseason. Okay, I think we'll wrap it up here because we know you have to get ready for today. Chris Bass, we had him on, and we asked him to pick – his five guys for a pickup basketball team. He had you on his team, but he compared you to Draymond Green. Do you think that your game would translate like that in basketball? Yeah, I, I call myself a poor man, Draymond Green, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my, I, I think that's my NBA comp. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see who, who the two uh, hoopers are on this team are. Uh, you know, Bass talks a big game. Uh, you know, I can see it, but uh, even at 38, I still can jump better than he can, so <laughs> I, I, he's got to prove it to me. You've had tons and tons of accomplishments over your career. One of the best pitchers of this generation. I don't think any of us have a problem saying that. You've had three very specific, or I guess four very specific individual achievements. I kind of want you to maybe rank for the people just to see from a pitcher's perspective what they see as more important. You have three immaculate innings. It's tied for the most in Major League history. You have multiple no-hitters, which is a rare feat not many pitchers have done. Multiple Cy Young Awards, which also not many pitchers have done that. And what was the last one? I have it listed right here. Hold on. Oh, and the 20 strikeout game. Mm -hmm. That's the tied for the most ever in a single game. So out of all four of those accomplishments, or you can even bust them up individually to the ones you've only done. Actually, you've done them. You know, all the ones you've done individually. What are you the most proud of or what was... I don't know what. What do you feel? What do you feel the most about? Well, number one is winning the World Series. No, Let's yeah, make of course. Sure yeah, yeah, I said that that's point. number one. Push, yeah. right. uh, number two, um, I'll say the Cy Youngs, um, those, because that also is a team aspect to it. Uh, you know, your team playing defense, team scoring runs, uh, going out and winning ball games. Uh, you know, as much as that's an individual award, there's there's a team component to that. So, uh, you know, I got. Thank coaches and teammates along the way for the, you know, being a part of uh, being part of that as well. Um, after that, on the individual games, uh, I take the 20 strikeout game. Yeah, uh, that that one was so cool. <laughs> uh, you know, there's only been that's only been done five times in major league history, and uh, to be a part of that group, uh, that's pretty special. Um, and then I put the no hitters next because uh, that's a complete game. You know, it yeah. takes an entire game. Everybody remembers those. And then. The immaculate innings are really cool. Um, you know, to be able to throw nine strikes, three strikeouts. I mean, I, I, I love striking guys out. I, yeah. I do. I, I, I no way. <laughs> I, I love it. So cool. I, I know. I, I, I take. I love doing it. Uh, so uh, to be able to get the, those type of accomplishments, uh, that, that's that's a fun uh, feat to have as well. Do you know who that last batter was in your 20 strikeout game? It should have been. Jo it should have been James McCann. Yeah, yeah. I know. James it McCann. wasn't. It, he was the last batter. He should have been twenty-one. Yeah. And he, we we joke about it. I was like, <laughs> You're so lucky you put that one-one slider in play. <laughs> Max, thank you so much for taking the time. This was unbelievable. Hopefully, we get to talk to you again soon. Because sure. I mean, love to pick your brain some more. Thanks hey, a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks you. Get up. Get, get up. Get up.